Hello students. Hope you all are doing great. I am Ashal Chaudhary, working as an assistant professor, EBA department in Sant Andrews Institute of Technology and Management. So today I am sharing a lecture on principles of management. Students, in previous lecture you have studied authority, types of authority, responsibility, accountability, and delegation of authority. So we will be continuing with unit 3 and today we will be covering coordination, principle of coordination, organization structure or design and organization chart and details. So let's start with today's lecture. So let's start with the coordination. Coordination is an orderly arrangement of group efforts to provide unity of action in the pursuit of common goals. Basically, coordination kya hota? Whenever you are organizing people or groups in such a way that they work together properly and well, that is your coordination. Basically, it also yeah, it also brings harmony in carrying out the different tasks and activities and that will help you in achieving your objectives. So therefore we can say that the coordination function is an orderly arrangement of efforts providing unity of action to achieve organizational goals. So students let's take the example of uh, uh, PUBG. You all are playing PUBG right now, right? So whenever you are playing that game what happens ki if there is no coordination between you and your other team members then how can you achieve the goal the ultimate goal in your pubg game is that you have to win so how will you win if you are not having properly coordination between you and your friends so coordination is required at each and every level and it is required in every activity just to achieve all your organizational goals or to your achieve your personal goals. Now, next is your characteristics of coordination. First is coordination integrates group efforts. As I told you, it's a group effort process because you can't work much efficiently as a single entity. Suppose if a task is given to 10 employees, then in that case, that ta task can be completed more efficiently and also in shorter duration. But if the same task is given to a single employee, then he might not be able to complete that task more efficiently or also it will take more time than the group task. So coordination integrates group efforts so that organizational objective can be achieved. Next is your coordination ensures unity of action. It means during coordinating process an effort is made to create unity among the various activities of an organization so that there will be no time lacking in completion of the task. Next is your coordination is a continuous process. Basically it is required in a continuation way. Otherwise, there is no use of coordinating one task only. Ab aisa to nahi hai that you have completed a task work once only. Now you will not require it again. If you want to achieve your goals, then you have to coordinate in a regular way. Next is your coordination is an, is an all pervasive function. It means that it is required at every level of the organization and also it is required everywhere. So as we have taken the example of PUBG, that is not an organizational task, right? But still we required a coordination so that we can achieve the our whatever the goal we are having so that we can achieve it. So it is a pervasive function. Next is your coordination is the responsibility of all managers. Basically, it is considered as it is a responsibility of all managers because managers have to maintain a harmonious relation in an organization. 
it is one of their responsibility so manager have to ensure that there is a proper coordination in an organization it's their responsibility okay it's an importance of coordination first is here it encourages team spirit basically it ensures the team spirit so that there will be no rivalries or conflicts instead of that employees will focus on their work and they will complete it on time because if there will be conflict between the employees that that will harm the organizational environment and also they will not be able to accomplish their goals so there should be a team spirit second is it keeps proper direction so there should there are many departments in the organization and each department performs different activities right so coordination integrates or that brings them together these activities to achieve the or to achieve their organizational goals or to achieve their common goals this coordination gives them proper direction to work all the departments in a harmonious way and in a coordinating way so that they can have a proper coordination and all the activities are to be done in a coordinating way so that they can accomplish their task next next is your coordination facilitates motivation basically if a employee is able to work so efficiently that there will be objective is being achieved then an organization gives them the financial and non financial benefits which will motivate them to work more efficiently and which will motivate them to work more and more right so next is here it makes optimum utilization of resources coordination basically focuses on minimization of the wastages and proper utilization of those resources resources which will be beneficial for the organization next is coordinate helps to achieve objectives quickly basically coordination helps to many minimize the conflicts rivalries wastage delays or any other organizational problems so it ensures a smooth working of the organization therefore what will help it will help the coordination of an organization to achieve its objective easily and quickly next is your coordination improves relations in the organization when there is a proper coordination in an organization at each and every level and manager shows interest in their subordinates activities and also guide them to work more efficiently that will help the overall improvement in the relation of the organization next is your coordination leads to higher efficiency when there is like proper utilization of resources and there is optimum utilization of resources without any wastage so that will result in more returns and low cost and that will lead to higher efficiency and last is your it improves goodwill of the organization see students if an organization is able to complete their assignments on time with the help of coordination that will lead to sell high quality goods and services at low price which will ultimately increase the goodwill of the organization principles of coordination first is early stage principle basically coordination should be started at a very early stage or at the planning stage so this will ensure that the best plans are made and it will also help in successfully implementing these plans second is your continuity principle as we have discussed earlier that it requires continuity thus it means that the pr process should not be only a one time process so the process of coordination should begin at the very early stage and continues until the organization exists next is your direct contact principle it is states that the manager should directly contact their subordinates thus it will help in building a good relation for managers with their subordinates next is your clarity of objective principle 
the objective of the organization should be clearly stated to each and every organization employees and also to each and every department thus there should not be any doubt regarding the objective of the organization so that will be automatically help in achieving the objectives so in a quickly and easily way next is your unity of command unity of command means one boss for one subordinate right we have also discussed in previous lectures that there should be a one boss for one employee it will be difficult to achieve the coordination if one employee has to report to more than one boss and thus it will be a difficult one to achieve the goals next is your scalar chain scalar chain means like there should be a proper hierarchy of level where information and instructions flow from top to bottom instructions or information flows from top to bottom and suggestions and complaints from follows from bottom to top which will facilitate coordination and there should be no confusion in the organization students please note that note down that scalar chain has been asked in short answer type questions in previous years exam so please make sure that you are able to write down about the scalar chain so please understand the concept of a scalar chain very rapidly okay next is your types of coordination first is your vertical and horizontal coordination vertical refers to the coordination among the activities of a manager and his subordinate it is needed to ensure that all levels act in a harmony and it helps to maintain unity of command between different levels for example when you are coordinating some activities like you have to do complete this task this activity is defined by the subordinate superior superior is commanding something some task to their subordinate that is your vertical and horizontal coordination occurs at the single hierarchical level it is a coordination which is done between the employees working at different level working at the same level sorry so here the example will be like uh, you are asking your colleagues about anything like you are asking them that can you please help me in this specific task that coordination that is between the uh, employees when you are working on a same level and you are coordinating some activities that is known as horizontal coordination next is your internal and external coordination internal in coordination in internal when it is established between different departments and units of an organization it is related with the internal activities and human efforts of an enterprise it includes both vertical and horizontal coordination but it will be limited to the organizational coordination only whereas when a coordination took place between a organization and its external environment that is your external coordination here external factors include that includes which are market consumers investors suppliers competitors etc these all are your external environment next is your procedural and substantive coordination procedural co coordination focuses on the procedures and a predefined path it is established it establishes the lines of authority and defines the sphere of activity and authority to each employee whereas substantive coordination doesn't follow any procedural path instead it is concerned with the content of the organization's activity and also it is based on certain principles and specified knowledge next is your techniques for better coordination first sound planning 
there should be a sound planning so that goals of the organization and goals of its unit must be clearly defined every member of the organization must understand fully how his job contributes to the overall objectives next simplified organization the line of authority and responsibility from top to the bottom of the organization structure should be clearly defined clear cut definition of authority and responsibility will help to avoid conflicts or any kind of confusions next is your effective communication there should be a open and regular uh, communication between the employees and their managers so that all the activities run, will run smoothly it will also help in resolving differences and in creating mutual understanding like a mutual understanding will be created if there is no conflict between the employees and their managers so that no employee will feel demotivated and will work more and more efficiently next is your effective leadership and supervision basically it ensures coordination of efforts both at the planning and the execution stage a good leader can continuously guide the activities of his subordinate subordinates in the right direction and also can inspire them to pull together for the accomplishment of objectives and last is your chain of command if there is a proper chain of command that then there will be no conflicts and manager can persuade the employees activities in such a way that they can achieve their department goals easily organization structure a organizational structure is a system that outlines how certain activities are directed in order to achieve the goals of an organization these activities can include roles rules and responsibility basically organizational structure is something like ki aap pehle hi sab kuch decide kar rahe ho that who is going to perform which task and how they are going to perform it and what exactly they require to perform it and to whom they are going to report for such task for completion of such task and who will be the responsible person for a specific task so each and everything is decided and predetermined in organization structure so basically is it's kind of a platform jiske through aapko kaam karna hai throughout your tenure you have to work on that according to that organization structure everything is predefined that who are going to perform which task and who are responsible for which task so each and everything is defined in the organization structure this is your features of good organization structure first is simplicity organization structure should be simple it should be clear like there is no use if you are making it a complicated one in that case no employees will understand what exactly they are supposed to do and what exactly they are going to perform so it should be a simple one so that each and every employee can easily understand it and easily work upon it next is your flexibility and continuity each organization structure should be flexible according to the environment see as we all know that environment it keeps on changing so there is no use if you are making a static organization structure where you can't make any kind of changes like for example if we take the current scenario right now we are all are having a uh, we are all are facing some problems due to the due to the corona if we are not well prepared about it well prepared about any contingencies which can occur so then in that case that organization will suffer loss like agar abhi in current scenario companies ke paas kya hota ki companies ke paas koi online portal hi nahi hota online kaam karane ka koi source hi nahi hota तो इन दैट सिचुएशन व्हाट हैपन कि कंपनी को क्या होता लॉस होता सो इट शुड बी फ्लेक्सिबल 
कि हाँ उनको पता होना चाहिए कि चेंजेस आते हैं एनवायरमेंट कीप्स ऑन चेंजिंग सो इट शुड बी मोडिफाइड इन सच अ वे इट शुड बी मेंटेन्ड इन सच अ वे कि अगर कोई चेंजेस करना भी है हमें अकॉर्डिंग टू दी एनवायरमेंट सो इट विल बी अप्रोप्रिएट अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट नेक्स्ट इज क्लियर लाइन ऑफ अथॉरिटी देर शुड बी अ क्लियर लाइन ऑफ अथॉरिटी लाइक वो यू हैव टू रिपोर्ट योर वर्क आपको किसको जाके रिपोर्ट करना है दैट वॉट एग्जैक्टली यू हैव डन एंड हु कैन गिव यू दी ऑर्डर सो देर शुड बी अ क्लियर लाइन ऑफ अथॉरिटी नेक्स्ट इज प्रॉपर डेलीगेशन ऑफ अथॉरिटी सपोज मैनी ऑर्गनाइजेशन इन मैनी ऑर्गनाइजेशन पीपल मैनेजर कीप्स ऑन डेलीगेटिंग दी अथॉरिटी so there should be a proper know how like how to delegate the authority to person and aap kisko delegate karna chahte ho is that person is capable enough or not next is your unity of command and direction unity of command and direction means like there should be a one boss only as we all know have discussed earlier that there should be a one boss only अदरवाइज इट विल क्रिएट अ कन्फ्यूजन लाइक वूम यू हैव टू रिपोर्ट राइट आपको किसकी चीज़ें माननी है आपको किसका ऑर्डर सुनना है सो देर शुड बी अ यूनिटी इन दैट देर शुड बी अ वन बॉस ऑन दी नेक्स्ट इज योर प्रॉपर एम्फेसिस ऑन स्टाफ प्रॉपर एम्फेसिस ऑन स्टाफ मीन्स लाइक यू नो दीज आर द एम्प्लॉयज एंड दे आर वर्किंग ऑन सच अ स्पेसिफिक टास्क सो वेन यू नो that whom is going to perform which task in that way you can proper emphasize on that particular thing you can blame us if our task is not completed you can simply blame that person theek hai there should be a difference between line and staff authority aapko sab ka pata hai that whom are responsible for which work so you can properly emphasize on a particular task on a particular employee Next is your contagion factors in organization design. First is your strategy. So it's whatever the strategy you are making, it should be based on the company's mission and its strategic goals and objectives. Next is your environment. Environment has an impact on decision making, specifically the difficulty of making decisions in uncertain and unpredictable environment. so organization must be able to adopt those changes and must be well prepared for such changes in advance next is your size of the organization the number of employers working in an organization indicates its size all the employees are included and considered as its size of the organization it is observed that large organizations differ structurally from small ones in terms of division of labors rules and regulation so all the things which are included in this that is considered as the size of the organization so it has a great impact on the structuring of the organization design next is your age of the organization it is very essential that you are designing your organizational structure while considering its stage of life cycle like birth youth middle life and maturity like in the birth stage the organization created by the entrepreneur is informal with no rules and regulations decision making is centralized with the owner and the task are not specialized and whereas in the youth stage the organization is growing it is expands and hires more employees it incorporates division of labor and formal rules and policies so decision making is still with the owner although it is shared by few persons closer to the owner like this you have to design your organization structure by considering all the factors key elements of organizational structure first is your work specialization the work of each and every person each and every employee should be specialized like whatever they are good at at if i am employee is good at writing the content 
so that work should be allotted to that particular person only in the same way that will also that will increase their efficiency and also it will maintain a interest level in those employees second is authority and responsibility there should be a proper coordination between authority and responsibility there should not be any kind of disparities between both because they goes on side by side next is your chain of command chain of command as i told you that all the command should be come from a one boss only there should be a proper chain like whom are going to command which employee and which manager is responsible for which department so there should be a clearly defined chain of command next is your centralization and decentralization it focuses on like which activities needs to be centralized and which activity or task needs to be decentralized so it should be planned according to the according to the these factors after considering these factor next is your span of control span of control as i told you that you should be well aware of that who whom you are going to report who will be the responsible manager aapko kisko ja ke report karna hai so there should be a proper clearly defined span of control and last is your departmentalization when you know the organization is large in number so there you should be de, uh, you, you should departmentalize the activities into different departments so that you can easily control the task of each and every employees and each and every department so these are the elements which are like beneficiaries for the organization structure last topic of the day is your organization chart the organization chart is a diagram showing graphically the relation of one official to another or others of a company it is also used to show the relation of one department to another or others or of one function of an organization to another or others so basically it is a chart which typically illustrates relation between people within an organization such relations might include managers to sub workers directors to managing directors chief executive officer to various departments and so on principles of organization chart first the clear definition of jobs chart should be prepared while keeping in view overall jobs of the organization every job has a suitable position on the organization chart next is authority and responsibility the responsibility for each job along with commensurate authority at different levels must be clearly shown in the organization chart it should be clearly defined in this chart next is end results area what we are expecting from the employees what is the like task which has been expected from the specific job that should be clearly defined from defined in this organization chart so that we know that what we are exactly expecting from each position next is flexibility it should be flexible it should be capable enough to make any changes according to the environment next is your control by dividing the overall task into smaller unit these charts provide a yardstick of performance which will help us in actually measuring the performance of actual performance in the end so that will help in help us in controlling that so that's all for today's lecture in next video i will be continuing your unit 3 only so here are the questions which has been asked earlier in your university exams first is what do you understand by organization chart i know you can solve it second question is what do you understand by coordination also explain its principles in detail so you have to solve these questions i hope you are clear with today's lecture and if you face any doubt or any query you have so do let me know i will arrange a doubt session for you thank you so much for your cooperation and your interest 
stay tuned for more videos.